Hey, welcome back to Taco Tuesday here at Bill Cook's. I'm still Bill Cook, and it's Taco, so it's always Tuesday someplace, right? All right, so we're gonna make Pollo Asada Tacos. I love this, they're fantastic. We're gonna do it uh, street taco style, so not a lot of frills and stuff. Uh, gonna keep it simple. And um, simple's good, when, it, when the chicken tastes this good, you're gonna wanna eat a lot of this, so. Stick around, I'll show you how to make it. It wouldn't be pollo out of tacos if it wasn't for the chicken, and the chicken better taste good, otherwise what's the point of eating this, making this, wasting all your time and money on the whole thing? You're gonna need some spices. This is a ground spice marinade. You don't need fresh chilies, you don't need dried chilies, you don't have to go through a lot of effort. Uh, you'll have most of this stuff already, but there's a couple things in here if you don't have it You should probably get it because it's delicious and you want to be cooking with th this stuff So uh, I'll walk you through each one of these things as we go along But we have our bowl here and starts with a quarter cup of water. So let's get that in there And I just said so again, so everyone has to drink or don't Because we don't condone that sort of thing around here Alright, you want to notice I'm not allowed to say the word so again. We have garlic here. I'm going to use a tablespoon of garlic in this to a quarter cup of water. Remember, we're going to use a tablespoon basically of everything except the cumin. It's going to be a little bit less. Okay, this is paprika, tablespoon. Chipotle powder. You might not have this. You might not be able to find this. You might. It might be really expensive if you get one small bottles at the grocery store. I get this at my uh, favorite spice uh, vendor website thing. And this bottle's pretty cheap. So, set it again. Eh, this is going to be hard. Alright. Ancho is another one of those you might not have. You should. Ancho is amazing. Think of it instead of chili powder. I use a lot of this and I'm going through it. Therefore, it's a little tougher to get out as it gets down the bottom. All right, that was another tablespoon of that. Cayenne, because you want it to hurt a little. This is not super crazy. This is only 35,000 Scoville units. You can get cayenne, which is way hotter, but I didn't do that. Pepper, ground pepper. This is ground white pepper. You can use ground black pepper. Same thing, basically. I just happen to have this big thing, so there you go. Said so again. Has somebody got a counter going. I don't know how to do that, so I doubt it. But somebody keep track, will you? Cumin. Now I have about a half. I don't really have a half a tablespoon measuring thing here, so. <laughs> <laughs> I keep saying so, aren't I? Yep. I'm just using this one, but only filling it up halfway. Cumin is pungent. Move this out of the way in order for you to be able to see better. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying. Salt. This is going to take a lot of salt, actually. Uh, you want this saltier than you would dare eat it because most of the salt doesn't penetrate the chicken. Only a little bit does. And uh, salt is a massive amount of flavor. So there you go. I have apple cider vinegar. Apple cider vinegar is going to add a lovely bite to this and help it penetrate the chicken. So that's a tablespoon of that. So okay. And olive oil. A tablespoon of olive oil. That'll help it coat nicely. There you go. I'm gonna grab a spatula here. Mix this up really, really good. You're, this is making a paste. This isn't making a, a dry rub. You want this to be real pasty. And it is pasty. That's paste. You're gonna smear this all over your chicken. 
you rub this in. Once you uh, butcher your chicken, this might be a little overly pasty. Uh, this, I want this a little thinner, so I'm going to add a little bit more water. So again. I got myself another quarter cup of water, but I only put about a third of that in. Going for a little bit looser texture than this. And as the spices hydrate, they're going to soak up a lot of that water too. So, you can put more water in, but you can't take it out. third of that quarter cup. Don't ask me to do fractions like that. What is a third of a quarter? <laughs> Alright. You know it's going to want the whole other quarter here. Alright, so start with half a cup of water. Maybe that's it. Yeah. That's what you're looking for right there. Really, really runny peanut butter. Nice runny thing. That'll work. Alright, next step is to butcher a chicken. Now this is whole breasts right here. Uh, they've been rinsed, they're sitting, uh, but this is way too thick and it's not going to get on there. So what I like to do is cut them off, make them into two things. Not really butterfly, I'm going to fully separate the two halves here, but I'm going to go lengthwise. Cut that, I'll show you in a second. Let me grab my knife. Chuck knife. Over here, start at this end, put two fingers on the uh, pointy end down here. Basically, a uh, knife goes on the back of your fingers that gets you about the right height there. Go along in a straight thing. Once you get to this point and the chicken's covering the blade, it's safe enough for you to put your hand here, move the blade through the chicken, and you have a nice thin piece of chicken. And another nice thin piece of chicken. And uh, repeat. If you have smaller fingers than I do, and I'm guessing you probably do, you're going to get thinner stuff if you use your fingers as a guy. Just say. Adjust accordingly. Alright, we have uh, four pieces of chicken. That's going to make a lot of tacos good because they're really good. They're delicious. More chicken to eat. I like it. This is going to go in the bowl here with our marinade. Now, you should do this for at least two hours. You can do it overnight if you wanted to. I wouldn't go much more than overnight, probably. The vinegar in there, gonna start reacting with the chicken. You can get some tough, chewy chicken. If it sits in vinegar too long, it kind of chemically cooks it with the acids and things. Thighs don't have that big a problem, but breasts are definitely susceptible to it. This is a lovely, amazing marinade here. And you can see, we have a lot of it on here. Oh, it's going to be so good. Yep. Okay, that is thoroughly coated. I'm going to put some uh, cling wrap on that top, some uh, plastic wrap on it. Uh, stick that in the fridge. I'm going to... I want to lick it, but I'm not going to because the chicken. But that's a lot of flavor going down the drain. Why are my fingers tingling? Oh, this might be spicy. So uh, put some uh, plastic wrap on this, 
throw it in the fridge, come back at least two hours, overnight's better. I'm hungry. I'm going to give it two hours. I'll see you back here when that's ready to go, and uh, we'll cook it up and make some tacos. Let's cook some chicken. Now, I've got my grill really, really hot. It's about 500 degrees or so. You can see it's smoking away there. I have cleaned the grill. It doesn't look, uh, the grate there doesn't look uh, super clean, but I promise I did scrape it down. Uh, it's not dirty, it's well seasoned. <laughs> That's the excuse we lazy people make. Uh, put your chicken down. I put it always at about a 45 degree angle so that when I go to do my quarter turn, it's easier to figure out. Just go against that and uh, smack the excess uh, sauce off there. Let's see how our chicken is doing. Oh, look at that, it looks beautiful. As you can see, I've already done the turn to get the cross hatch marks on there. In this sort of a meal, it's absolutely not necessary because it's gonna get chopped up in little pieces and no one will ever see it, but you'll know it's there and that's all that's important. All right, now that's on the second side, let's close that lid and let it finish cooking. All right, a couple more minutes have gone by. Chicken is good, let's check it. Yep, nice and firm. That's usually how you can tell chicken's done. If you've cooked chicken on your grill a lot, you know when it gets nice and firm, it's done. So we'll pull that off. How long does it take? Well, it depends on the chicken, it depends on the grill, it depends on a lot of things. Couldn't give you an exact time. I think this was about seven or eight minutes. But again, it's cut thin, so there you go. All right, so I'm scraping the grill down again because I'm going to grill the tortillas. Grilled tortillas are the greatest tortillas in the world. If you haven't had grilled tortillas, go fire up your grill and throw tortillas on it right now. Pause the video. I'll wait. All right, now that you're back, let's throw some tortillas on this grill and uh, so we can basically eat because it's tacos. They require tortillas. So let's get our tortillas out and say so again. <laughs> I hope someone's keeping track of that because this is so hard. It really is. You don't realize you're doing it. It's like talking with your hands. It's the moment somebody tells you, you talk with your hands. You can't not talk with your, your hands and you're so self-conscious about it. Anyways, I digest. I digest. All right, throw the tortillas on there. This is a hot grill. Uh, you want it to be fairly hot. Eh, tortillas are a little broken that's okay i won't tell anybody i'm gonna throw some corn tortillas on there i'm gonna throw some uh, flour tortillas on there now i've stuck the tongs in there to get the raw chickeniness cooked off um uh, make sure you test the handle before you grab the tongs because they might be a little hot um uh, these were a little warm but they're okay and uh, now that they're cooked off they're completely safe i have a towel ready to go for the tortillas to come out uh, this only takes a minute. You don't want to overcook your tortillas, but you will see them puff up. Just keep tossing them and turning them. Flip them a little bit. Do not close the lid and walk away. These go off so fast, it's not even funny. See, you got one puffing. Perfect. Let's pull them off, and we can eat. All right, everything's off the grill. Tortillas have been grilled. Oh, I love grilled tortillas. They're the best. Pow! I don't know if you can see that really well. You see them in a second. I have corn and flour, a little short on flour, plus people like, uh, or a little short on corn, people like flour tortillas. They're not right for this. You, you shouldn't do that, but they're tacos. You can do whatever you want. Mexico gave us tacos. The world has embraced them, and we make them our own. There you go. Thank you, Mexico, for what you did. You uh, did a wonderful thing giving us tacos. Don't complain that we ruined it. That's what we do. All right, look at this piece of chicken. This thing's amazing. All right, so I'm going to slice this off in some nice thin pieces. This looks super yummy, incredible. Again, if you're using thighs, it's gonna be a little juicier. This is a little healthier. Teach them. And I'm gonna actually chop this up two different ways. Like that. There you go. So we get little blocks of yumminess right there. <laughs> I'm thinking that's probably enough. I have a lot of extra meat here. Uh, that's gonna have to make enchiladas. Mm, not tonight, but I can save that meat for something else. So let's uh, 
stop saying the word so. Look at how good this looks. Okay, I'm gonna make one on flour and one on corn to show you the difference. Here we go, we got tongs. Okay, street tacos are simple. I forgot something important. Pause right here. This is where my hands were when I paused, but I'm back with some pico de gallo. I made this the other day in case you uh, missed the uh, Taco Bell uh, Mexi Melt episode. That's the pico de gallo I made. This has been almost 48 hours. This is the end of it. Uh, any more than that, she's not going to be good anymore. So, this is the swan song for our pico de gallo. That's why you don't make a huge batch, unless you really want to eat a lot of pico. Okay, I have a lovely sauce here, not a traditional sauce. Again, it's tacos, you can do whatever you want. This is mayonnaise, sour cream, some hot sauce, some chipotle uh, powder, some ancho powder, some garlic powder, a little black pepper in there, a uh, squeeze of lime, and a little bit of heavy cream actually to thin it out so that it's going on, but it's uh, kind of even parts. I don't really measure, I just kind of go. Put a schmear in the bottom. Look at that, nice schmear. I like a nice schmear. What can I say? Chicken. You can always put a little bit more in a flour tortilla. It's been a lot of people like flour tortillas. They also hold up really nice and they don't uh, crumble. Corn, uh, corn can be dangerous. Okay. Pico. A little bit. A little extra onion. This is very traditional street tacos, just onion and cilantro. And something that is not traditional for tacos in Mexico is cheese. But if you are going to put cheese on it, you're going to put like a cotija or a queso fresco, something like that. This is queso fresco, which literally just means fresh cheese. Um, so it's an uncured and whatever cheese that hasn't sat around for a long time and hardened. It's very light and fluffy. Think of it. Uh, Almost like a Parmesan, but without any salt to it. It has a nice, somewhat creamy finish to it, but uh, it's not too uh, anything if you haven't had it before. Cotija cheese is also very nice. Cotija is Mexican uh, Parmesan. I mean, absolutely. If you don't have Cotija cheese, just put Parmesan on it. Most people will not know the difference. There you go. You'll learn something about cheeses. Yeah. All right. Can we get back to the tacos now? Thank you. All right, as you can see here, we have a pollo asado street taco on a flour tortilla. I'm doing this for the B camera. Ooh. Okay, look at that guy right there. That looks yummy, ready to eat. And this is the flour, or this is the corn tortilla. That's the flour tortilla over here. You can see the difference. It's the reason people like flour tortillas. They hold more stuff, but uh, if you like to mix and match and make them different ways, well then you probably like corn tortillas, because you can make them however you want. See, this one didn't get sauce on it. No, it didn't, because I'm gonna do something slightly different to this one. This one's just going to get onion, cilantro, a little, Cotija, or actually, sorry, queso fresco. I just want to say cotija cheese, just because I like the fact that it's got a nice sound to it, you know? All right, let me grab the secret weapon. This is my secret weapon. Yes, I grow my own tomatillos. I don't have any of them yet, and they haven't grown it. But as you can see here, this is the Erdaz Taqueria uh, Chili Verde sauce here. See this? You see this? This stuff is so good. Uh, I make my own uh, 
to the verde sauce, but uh, there's salsa verde. This is good when I'm lazy. It's amazing. So I have now a completely different taco because when you do them on corn, you can pick. When you do them on flour, you don't get as many. So there's uh, there's your there's your tacos. Let's see if this. Ooh, doing my Vanna White thing. Yeah, look at that. I don't know. Did she ever model tacos? I doubt it. Although she did do Playboy boy once, so. Potato, potato. Ooh, there you go. Didn't she? I think so. I don't know, I'm old, I don't remember. Maybe that was just in my head. <laughs> Leave me a comment if you remember that as well. It might just be a, a group delusion. Who knows? There you go. Pollo Sada Tacos. Me rambling about uh, Vanna White in the 80s naked. What more could you ask for Taco Tuesday? It's perfect. All right. Enjoy your tacos. I'm going to enjoy mine. And I will uh, see you on the next video. Thanks. Bye.